Welcome to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with us. I have Carissa Mikulsak with us today. She is the CEO of, and I want to make sure I got this right, is that Tiller? Did I, did I pronounce that right? Absolutely perfect, Michael. Thank you. But Carissa, thanks for being on our show. Give us some background about you, and then I want to get into some of the questions I've got stacked up for you. Absolutely. It's an honor to be with you this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Sure. Um, I have had the privilege of being part of two really significant transitions in the human capital industry. So I started working in uh, recruitment talent acquisition in 1999, right when we started to see not only movement in the way that people were recruiting from the newspapers, if you can even think back to that, um, to online and digital means, but also in what was the first transition of worker values really changing for the first time away from tenure to a performance oriented culture. Uh, I cut my teeth building businesses at CareerBuilder and in 2008 in what I would call digital 2.0 with the onset of really heavy social media starting to be used for businesses, I spun out and built my first company uh, to try to solve some of the employment and talent acquisition problems we saw originate out of that first transition. So fast forward to today, uh, we're in the second transition in, in just less than 20 years where we're starting to move away from traditional recruitment and starting to rely, rely rather on technology in an even more heavy uh, capacity, looking at things like AI to make matches between employers and jobs and starting to reevaluate again uh, what values really drive workers. So um, I have been part of this for my entire career and like any entrepreneur, uh, have this insatiable desire to, to solve problems. And so with your correct pronunciation of Tiller, uh, we're giving it a, a good run this time with a real focus on skills um, rather than titles. Talk to me about Tiller's processes and how it uses AI uh, in this radically changing workforce that we're living with now. You are correct. It is radically changing and quickly, and it's hard for even an industry practitioner to keep up um, with the different trends we see daily. What Tiller has uh, chosen to really focus on uh, is using skills to match workers to job requirements uh, rather than titles. And we can dig deeper in that if you'd like, um, but our mission is to remove bias in AI. And we do that, uh, some people call it blind hiring, um, but we do that by simply not sharing with an employer someone's name uh, or demographic background, uh, their gender or even their past title. Rather, we serve them pre-qualified, background checked, applicants to their job based on skills. And what's really different about Tiller's technology, um, we have two technologies, I'm speaking of the marketplace now, is that our clients, which range from small businesses to the largest uh, Fortune 500 organizations in the US, rely on our technology, our machine learning, to make that match, and they don't interview these candidates. Now, given we're focused on the gig economy today, so these are all jobs uh, with start and end date. So as we start to make this leap to relying on AI and machine learning to make matches to people that are gonna work in our organizations and shape our culture, uh, the gig economy stands out uh, as the leader uh, in being most comfortable to rely on some of these technologies. Let's drill down into the statement you made earlier about skills versus tenure or any other um, criteria that people are looking at. You're, you're really focusing on that. How are you using AI with the skill sets to get better connections for the people involved? 
Thanks for the opportunity to share. You know, if we think back to when recruitment was created and when we started relying on the resume and the title, which are the core tools that we admittedly still use today because they're oftentimes the tools that are available to us, um, we're talking about a time when Ford made its first car and Ford has iterated and improved so much. Um, and that's really what, what we're seeing in the industry and what we're doing with Tiller. So what we've done first in hypothesis and now have proven the epic, efficacy um, of doing this is we have taken away titles uh, from people's profiles and rather we look at them as an amalgamation of their skills. What our technology does is it then matches skills to job requirements. So let's say that someone has been a taxi cab driver and a bank teller. Uh, I'm just pulling out random positions. Um, and they've never been a customer service rep, but there's a job for a customer service rep that has requirements such as being able to conduct quick uh, financial transactions, being able to take and follow directions, being able to listen to a client uh, and suggest a solution. Um, having basic communication skills. These are all things that an individual may have gained in their prior jobs. And if we take away titles, which we actually argue are bias, um, we all of a sudden see that this person is really applicable and fitted for so many different roles. So we struggle with skill gap in this country and around the globe. And I don't think that we can solve it 100% by simply reallocating people uh, based on skills, but it's certainly the first step and gets us halfway there um, when our clients start to fish in a different pool by eliminating that bias of talent. They're oftentimes blown away by how large uh, the, the pool is in their own backyard of candidates that really do have the right skills. At Tiller, the way that we learn and become true machine learning and AI uh, is that each time we reallocate someone, we have a 360 degree feedback circle uh, where both the worker and the employer tell us whether or not we've got that reallocation right. Uh, do they feel that the skills were point on? And over time, what happens as our machine learning uh, truly learns from millions and millions of data points is that our technology oftentimes knows better uh, than the employer, even myself, what's gonna make a great candidate match. What else is broken in the, um, in the hiring industry that you feel needs to be fixed? Um, you know, I think that the way that we're approaching total talent management today is a bit broken. Total talent management uh, is a term that uh, people that work in human capital use to say we are looking at our entire uh, strategic um, hiring process and we want to see if it's aligned with our business goals. Are we hiring the types of workers that are going to really help us achieve those goals? And again, because we're relying on traditional recruitment, we're oftentimes relying on only one category of worker, such as the traditional W-2 worker, who's a wonderful and important worker. Um, but as we start to really expand definitions of diversity, which is something that's broken uh, in recruitment today as well, but, but I'll stay focused, I won't digress. Um, we also have to really expand our thinking uh, in this area and connect the dots. Now, the gig economy is something that we, we may know about it, but some people that are older than us don't understand the term. And I wanted you to bring out what you see the future holds for the gig economy, what developments are going to be going to, to take the, the shape of what's to come next. Absolutely. And just to define the gig economy a bit from a less formal perspective, we think of it as people who really value flexibility or have a specific schedule that they need to work around that work for more than one employer. Some people call it shift-based work. Some people call it gigging, hence the gig economy. Some people simply call it temporary work. Um, what we see is that this is really a growing segment. All over 50% of the U.S. economy is predicted to work or generate at least a fashion of their income in the gig economy by just 2020. We're a few months away and, and we may be on pace to exceed those statistics. So what's coming up? What's coming up is that it's going to grow. Uh, as I mentioned, 
it's very open to digesting AI and different technologies to help it accelerate. So it's a neat spot for um, perhaps uh, uh, less uh, front running uh, organizations to kind of sit back and watch what works and what doesn't and really learn from if they'd like to be a bit more conservative with their approach. And one thing that you'll really see quite a focus on in the gig economy is conversations around portable benefits. The gig economy has been tremendous for our economy. Uh, there's opportunities for the economy to continue to grow. Um, but what needs to happen in order for that to be sustainable growth is that just as we've created benefit systems that employers contribute to uh, to care for W-2 employees, we're starting to hear a lot of talk around a new concept of portable benefits, where benefits will actually follow the gig worker or the portable employee, perhaps that's the new term that will emerge from job to job, and perhaps both employer and employee contribute to build a sustainable network. Um, and that's an important opportunity for our economy because just like a W-2 worker in the gig economy, a cared for worker is a more engaged worker with a higher productivity level. Um, so we certainly expect to, to keep a beat on the conversations uh, on portable benefits and to see some really interesting uh, technologies um, infiltrate the, the gig space. Good answers. All right, Carissa, thanks for being a guest on today's show. Such a pleasure. Thank you for the wonderful questions. You're welcome. All right, you've been watching CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with us. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and don't forget to download our new app on the Apple Store or Android CEO Money. All right, we'll see you next time.